लाइफ स्ट्रीम में जो अटेंड करता है उसको पता चलेगा ना Yeah, I have also pasted a link in the chat. So if you would like to see the current participants. No, no, not necessary. Okay. Good morning, madam. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? We had a wonderful <laughs> session uh, with uh, Akshat, and yes, our yes. faculty members have got lot of inputs. Thank you yes. very much for our association, and yes, I yes. wish that it goes a long way and yes, yes. Uh, make us close to each other. That's it. Yeah. Yes, as long as we are doing good work, it is yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is important actually. So we have with us our vice principal also, Mrs. Kavita Jaju. Uh, Kavita, madam, this is uh, Dr. Sanjay Kadam. Uh, good morning. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And uh, all the three uh, sessions, two Kavita, sessions that we had. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Kadam. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> good morning, sir. And uh, all the All the sessions were wonderful, so really interactive. And the second session on um, innovations and teaching, all the sessions were wonderful. I'm sure the students so, were really interactive. Just a little background: uh, quite a few of our students have taken up courses in Python. We have these uh, credit courses, so under Coursera, Yale, Harvard, they have been doing these courses. Um, the even the advanced one. Because I think nowadays students are all keen on learning all these things, you know, tools, software. So just wanted you to know. So maybe some students who have joined, they may be they may be aware or they may be total novice. Any one of them. <laughs> Akshat, can you answer this or I'll answer? Yeah, no, please go ahead. Feel free. Yeah, yeah, uh, ma'am. I do agree that students are very, uh, I mean, uh, in interested in knowing about these latest technologies and stuff. but here you know where we are making a difference is that you know on coursera or any online learning platform it is these are pre recorded lectures or sessions or videos and wherein the student you know happens to learn that much you know when the the, the concepts or the uh, Uh, i mean you can say the skills are not developed i mean basically the idea because you know it's very difficult to really learn from an online pl uh, uh, platform right uh, sir sir yeah what we are making a difference is that we are teaching them you know on uh, on a one to one basis like you know sir. they are facing the screen yeah. and uh, every, every time we write a particular code we ask the mm. student they have understood it and mm. we ask them to write a new code and mm. share the screen with us mm. so so that then, was the idea that is why yeah. i told you that many right. of them are doing that so once right. you tell them how you are going to go about conducting it um, they will really come to know the difference so actually you need to find yeah yeah we we'll touch upon that thank uh, you thank you sanjay sir yeah yeah so can we start yes, thank you for your input can, can we start ma'am shobhna ma'am sure. ah yes we can start let's go ahead yeah. okay a very good morning to one and all at the outset let me welcome you all for the orientation talk on introduction to python in data sciences and business intelligence which is being organized by our college under the scheme of rusa 2.0 you may be aware that since 2018 python program has become most popular programming language in the world today almost all small and large scale employers looking for the professionals who can code in python as most systems are shifting to include this program in their systems the python program has created yeah, large please please the python program has created large scale job opportunities to the students from various fields keeping this in view we are organizing this program for our students we are sure that they will benefit from this orientation so before we begin with the presentation I would like to invite our principal, Dr. Shobhana Vasudev, ma'am, to address our students. Shobhana, ma'am, please. Ah, uh, good morning, everybody, my dear students, and the staff members who have joined. Uh, this is going to be another opportunity that is coming in your way. The
Ma'am, we could hear you. We could hear you very clearly. Yes, madam. Please continue. Please continue. And there is lot of. I am able to. What I did, I. Uh, I'll just come out of the. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh. Uh. Ria. Ria. And there are two, three students over here. Ria Shantanu. Uh. Are they students or are they your team? Uh. Akshay. Uh no, I don't believe. Yeah, yeah because I Shantanu, yeah, Shant yes, sorry, yeah. Shantanu and Iria have been answering the emails, so I know. Shant, uh, there's another Shantanu. Iria, you could join the YouTube link, beta. Sure, ma'am. Yeah, and Shantanu. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please join the uh, YouTube link. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't know, Satira. Yeah, I think Madam might be reconnecting you to a slide. Yeah. So, so, so I think you, uh, Aksha, you just let them know how your okay. course is going to be different from a regular yes. online course. So, Madam, uh, before you know, uh, uh -huh. before we begin with that, let me introduce uh -huh. uh, our resource person to the students. Yeah. So today we have with us Mr. Akshat Kadam as a resource person for the program. Mr. Kadam is a CTO of Devlin Technologies. He is electrical engineer by profession and an alumnus of Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. He has served as a research scientist at a very reputed company, namely Sony in Japan. He has been associated with so many institutes and engaged training programs for them as well. He is with us today. For this orientation talk, so I think before uh, Madam reconnects, uh, I would. I have connected myself, sir. Yes. I have Madam, connected. Please, please yeah. continue with your yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, just uh, sorry for the initial technology hiccup. Uh, good morning once again, my dear students and staff, uh, our uh, Santosh Patel and Mrs. Kavita Jaju, and the today's resource person, Mr. Akshat. And Mr. Sanjay Kadam, uh, this is yet another opportunity Podar is going to bring before you, my dear students, so that you are going to be career ready and uh, ready to face the challenges of the technology disruption and revolution that is taking place outside our campus. I am aware that all of us are getting ourselves educated about the ever-changing technology. What is today is changed tomorrow, and what was there day after yesterday, day before yesterday, is definitely not going to be there day after tomorrow. It is going to be a continuous learning that all of us might have agreed, discovered, and understood over the period of 18 months of this COVID-laid uh, situation that we are all facing. In every time you check up your internet, WhatsApp rules are changing. Internet rules are changing. Instagram is giving more options to you. Twitter is going to become more handy to you. What does that mean? All these technology giants are constantly engaging in their research and development, and they are modifying, changing things so that it becomes more user friendly and more useful to the common man like you and me. Tomorrow we will join a bank or an insurance company. Or become a marketing manager of a, a FMCG, or we may become a professional chartered accountant. Whatever that we are going to do, we just cannot escape from the disruption that is taking place. Believe me, there is nothing called full stop as far as your additional knowledge is concerned. You are debit the receiver, credit the giver doesn't change. Debit losses and expenses credit incomes and gains doesn't change but how do you account for your expenses how do you account for your income how are you going to handle the technology that is going to be there for us to utilize capitalize and optimize i think i personally look forward for akshat session because he is going to bring to you what is python today and how it may metamorphose in future and how do you keep track of this metamorphosis 
How are you going to keep yourself abreast? Is what Akshat is going to bring before you. And I wish all of you take advantage of this orientation. Think, do research, and definitely I will encourage you to take up at least some kind of basic knowledge in the form of undergoing credit courses. Wish you good luck. Welcome, Mr. Akshat, a repository of knowledge, a very great person in the field of technology and young. That is the most important thing. And we have got young but experienced entrepreneur turned technical person to you. I am welcome to you, Akshat, over for your session. Yes, thank you so much, madam. And uh, just appreciate the absolutely fantastic uh, uh, introduction that you have just offered for me. Now, uh, let me just also uh, give a short intro of myself and uh, we'll just... Um, yeah, so this is uh, basically a short profile of myself. And uh, what we will be doing today is that uh, today for all of you students of Modar College, what we have brought is uh, we have a session today in uh, understanding what Python is and its importance in today's fields of uh, data analytics and also uh, how it plays a role in business intelligence today. So uh, this is a short agenda. It's a very short session. Uh, we're already 10 minutes in uh, into a one hour session. So I'll be speaking for about say, let's say 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, I would just expect everybody to uh, sit back and just uh, really listen in to the session with an open mind and just try to absorb a few, you know, key concepts or, um, you know, key facts that you may come across today in the session. And uh, I'm hoping that this is more of also a general awareness education about what is happening in the market. And hopefully uh, in the second half of the talk, I can just try to drive home a few points about why today Python has become the most important programming language as compared to, uh, you know, any other language today in the history of programming languages especially because uh, it has become an absolutely ubiquitous uh, paradigm for coding and also creating things and the entire global community has come together to use this so you know today you as a commerce student or as an economic student tomorrow you may feel that hey i will be going into finance and accounting uh, why is this course even relevant to me should i even be listening in and uh, before I give you any spoilers, I would like to just mention that, yes, I think uh, this course is still extremely rele relevant to you and uh, we will also touch upon those points. So yeah, let's just uh, go right in. Okay. So before we actually start, I think one point that we need to uh, state, you know, that uh, we have been observing in the market today is that a lot of Indian students and graduates are not prepared for the changing requirements of the industry today and what has been happening is something very unique has happened in this last decade especially the fact that uh, the global industry has been changing every decade or so every five years there is a major update in all of uh, the developments and the way that companies are even working but what we on the other hand something that we have seen is that educational institutions uh, be it a school or a college or even you know uh, your typical coaching institutes they have not updated themselves to uh, the changing landscape that you know the current industry and companies are requiring and uh, this is for no typical fault of their own uh, it is the inertia of you know a large sector or a large institution that prevents it from that gives it stability but prevents it from being extremely agile but what we do require today is, you know, a massive overhaul and an updation of uh, everything that has happened in the past two decades because the speed of uh, innovation has now been accelerating, which means that every year we are advancing faster than we even advanced the last year. So this is what we at Devlon are aiming to do, especially working with colleges uh, all over Mumbai and Maharashtra. So this is a, just a bit of a background about us. And uh, before I actually talk about Python today, what I would act, uh, like to speak before that is uh, the trigger or, you know, the precursor to how data analytics and data science as a field even began. And uh, that begins with what 
uh, this common buzzword that you might have heard today, which is the big data revolution or the AI revolution. So, of course, today AI, I, I will not speak too much about AI because uh, that is another topic and that will probably need a lot of more additional time. But uh, just to tell you how these two things are intertwined, uh, everything started with a change in the way that we experience the internet today. So, uh, I'm sure everybody who is in college today, you will not know the kind of internet that I have uh, posted over here in pictures, but probably some of the teachers will, uh, you know, possibly, you know, relate and even resonate with these kind of web pages. Uh, they were very old and the internet back then did not take, it was mostly like a dictionary, like an encyclopedia, but it did not behave much in terms of getting an active response from the user. Maybe an account that you had on the website was the extent of it. But what has happened since then is that around 2006 is when um, the paradigm changed and the internet became a platform and not just, you know, a book for people to open and read, but also a place for them to interact and to uh, generate your own types of data. So today you use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube without even thinking. You uh, watch videos, you like your friends' posts, you comment on things. And uh, I, you should think of this as, you know, not just uh, you interacting with your friends, but also interacting with the internet. And your information that uh, you publish to these websites, that is today linked to your persona and it helps companies understand who you are as a person without ever meeting you in person or without ever interacting with you directly. And that is what is happening. It's not just that you are doing this to serve companies, but uh, it is also created a big internet global community where people are able to help each other through open source communities and uh, creating content for people themselves by people. But uh, without getting into the nitty gritties of uh, everything that has opened up, the main takeaway from this point is that Big data is basically the explosion of data that has happened since the every person on the, in the world who has an internet connection started generating data every day. And suddenly from uh, data being just, you know, uh, that the kind that you collect from say feedback forms, the paper feedback forms or online uh, login information, it has suddenly, and you know, maybe just a phone number that today it has even become likes, it has become uh, everything that you buy on Amazon, every uh, travel website that you visit, every review that you read online and also uh, how you manage your expenses and even of course not to mention everything that you watch on say Netflix or even uh, Hotstar. So that is also feeded into you know some company system where they help, uh, they are trying to create or improve their product to suit you better so that you will keep consuming it. So. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It has led to immense amounts of efficiency and uh, global economic output. And that is all powered by this giant explosion of data that today for the sake of just understanding, let's call it big data. And uh, what happened when this explosion of data met with the rising, the resurgence of artificial intelligence algorithms, which uh, just, you know, to give a little bit of background, they are an absolutely, they are not a new concept at all. Uh, AI as a concept itself is decades old, almost as old as uh, computers when they were conceived. So, but what happened back then was that we did not have the kind of data to power these algorithms and actually give them some sort of um, measure to perform. But today, what we have is that th these same algorithms or maybe a little improved uh, since maybe about early 2012 is that when they combine with big data today you have all of uh, the fantastic products that you're seeing today in fact some of the best most innovative products that you, you might have possibly even imagined possible from ai these could not have been possible without all of the data that you know is created through you know big data services and uh, just to give you a little pri also one more thing that you need to be cognizant about, to be you know aware about, is that computing power, it's not just our algorithms, not just our data, but also our computing strength, which is constantly improving year on year. So 
these AI algorithms also need a lot of computing power to do this work in you know a tractable amount of time. And today, you know, uh, there is uh, we have already well crossed the point where you know the smartphone that you are probably watching this video in or that is in your pocket is uh, now more powerful than all of the computing power that NASA had in uh, in their labs during the 1969 moon mission. And what will soon happen is in a, just a few more years, this one smartphone will likely exceed the computing power of the human brain itself. So it's hard to even conceive what that means, but to even take that a step beyond, even a decade later from there, uh, one single computing device will be able to do more than all of humanity's uh, net cumulative brain power can do. So it's hard to imagine what that even means, but safe to say that these algorithms are only going to improve even better and uh, all the tasks that we found that you know this is definitely going to be ai is not going to come over here this is purely you know the realm of humans and human intellect uh, we are we are likely going to have an awakening uh, when when this phase approaches when we will be start seeing that ai is already beating us in those fields where we did not even imagine it's possible and uh, one fantastic recent uh, development that probably you might see is uh, there is a company in America called Boston Dynamics that creates uh, extremely advanced robotics uh, devices and uh, machines where this is one of their uh, you know products that they've constantly been improving year on year and this I, I would admit that this level of athleticism even I would have trouble doing myself but this robot is now able to do much more than even this what you're seeing in this little clip here so safe to say that uh, all the innovation that you're seeing today comes not just from AI but AI plus big data so let's move on to uh, the next big point that I want to make is that uh, this big data has also opened up a new field of analytics because you are using AI and you know all of these innovative algorithms to create various new things. But at the base level, what happens is that you still have a lot of data that you need to generate, uh, you know, real inferences from, do real work from. And uh, we'll just take a look at a few examples here. And uh, you know, sometimes people think that, okay, fine, AI is doing all these nice things, it will creating these innovative products. But uh, maybe you have not even realized that, you know, this technology has not even spared the field of law. And today in fields of law or even accounting or even when it comes to, say, uh, plagiarism detection, when it comes to, say, academic writing, uh, today you have all of these, you know, just a plethora of tools that are out there in the market and um, they are used for various reasons. So, you know, whatever... Um, image that you might have of say a law job or you know something where the law is involved is that you may imagine those courtroom proceedings but outside of the courtroom were most of 90 percent of the lawyer's work is just going through tons of paperwork he has to just go through uh, so much of documentation which is now also being digitized is that this is now can be automized uh, automated through all of these tools and it's not just, you know, uh, say criminal law or civil law, but even the typical industrial contract law. Tomorrow, if you are working in a firm and your firm has to go through so much paperwork every day, uh, you will soon realize that in time, uh, a lot of this work will not depend on humans. It will, these companies will depend on all of these softwares, which uh, just slash out the time and cost for everybody. Now, what has, this has led to is this has led to a new industry popping up uh, which was probably did not exist uh, you know over a decade ago which we now call SaaS which is software as a service and uh, there are startups small and large businesses whose entire business is focusing on creating a product that other businesses use and uh, this entire B2B expansion is now further powered by AI because AI is now able to literally replace you know hours and hours of human labor with minutes of computing power and uh, you know what they say with about computers is that they do not tire they do not make mistakes so it will def it's going to be cheaper for them and companies will shift to this in time so this is something that you should all be 
aware of of these developments also happening if you are going to remain in this field and remain on top of these things so let's just take a look at another application which uh, probably everybody would be aware of you know as unlike the last one which is you know the impact of ai in retail and uh, you know one of the biggest ai products that uh, you know we have seen in this past 5 years is you know just the invention of recommendation systems because uh, the very fact that you can take all of the data that people are uh, that is generated when people interact with your website your online store and just improve the person's experience increase their likelihood of purchasing these products all of this is possible because of recommendation systems they help people keep coming back uh, you know you've ever had that conversation with uh, your friends where uh, you just google searched for something once and the next time you started getting ads for it you start every time you opened amazon you started seeing ads for it and you just thought that oh my god my phone is literally stalking me well uh, this is exactly what is happening in the back where it is taking your information and it is giving you uh, recommendations based on that so uh, and of course a natural extension of this is that of you know chatbots and robocallers where you know if you have businesses today big startups and unicorns that are so big that they constantly have thousands of customers interacting with their website and you cannot have uh, you know the you cannot hire a literal call center for you know just handling customer inquiries so these companies are using chatbots they are using robo callers instead of telemarketers and uh, this is again that to another huge saving of costs for these companies and uh, it will only keep going in this direction so uh, if you've seen this much you might be thinking okay so some of these jobs are not going to be there anymore maybe i should i be worried uh, or i am going to be working in uh you know say accounting or maybe i'll be doing a job that uh you know i i won't have to worry about chatbots or robocallers but uh, another thing that will happen is if you're going to be interacting with a client ever you know in your say prospective career uh this is maybe something which is you know the next iteration in chatbot technology so this is something that came maybe just under a year ago and uh, this is google's uh, absolute latest innovation in chatbot technology so i'll just play a small clip it's about a minute long so just listen in on this summary of uh, what is now possible with uh, just chatbot it's not just limited to one particular context but this chatbot can literally talk to you like uh, a complete human being as a stranger it would interact with you Google has released a neural network powered chatbot called Mina that they claim is better than any other chatbot out there. The secret behind Mina's conversational skills is the crazy amount of data it was trained on, about 341 gigabytes of text, or to put that in more understandable terms, 40 billion words, including millions of social media conversations. What separates Mina from other chatbots is its ability to give specific context dependent answers. For example, if you say, I like football, and a chatbot replies, that's nice, the response makes sense, but is not specific. So let's try chatting with Mina. As you can see from the chat logs, Mina not only answers questions sensibly and coherently, but is even capable of cracking a joke. Next, you see a selection of topics where the user talks with Mina about movies, and the bot even expresses the desire to see these movies too. This is very human-like. Mina even tried to come up with a proper definition of philosophy. These scholarly-like attempts to answer such deep questions is much more advanced than previous state-of-the-art chatbots. In order to understand how Mina works, you need to read Google AI's recent paper towards a human-like open domain chatbot. Mina's main architecture is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. Okay, so this uh, goes into the details of you know what is exactly inside the internal AI architecture. So let's just skip this part because it's not even relevant to us and uh, to be honest, even I don't understand all of it, but uh, just safe to say that this is going to even improve further from this uh, from this point ahead. So this is again something to watch out for. Okay, so that brings us to the end domain of, social media. Uh, our first section, and uh, where I was just giving you a small brief or just a a slight teaser into you know what is happening in the world of AI, especially uh, the recent innovations that are taking place now you know as a student today uh, you would be thinking okay fine uh, 
how does this relate to me or what can I do about it? Uh, whether, you know, can me learning Python programming even help? And what is the sort of job that I am expected to work on? So let's just see if we can take uh, a bit of a look uh, about this. All right. So moving on. Um, the biggest thing that we have seen right now is that is that digitization is now accelerating automation and uh, so many organizations today are now moving from you know just so much of paperwork and you know completely digitizing their data so that it creates avenues for automation and um, this is also further exemplified by the fact that digital india is a new uh, you know the recent uh, initiative brought by even the government that is pushing businesses to further digitize their data and you know be more independent from uh, all of you know the clunky paperwork and bureaucratic uh, you know limitations that have been plaguing businesses so far so but you know what is a side effect of this happening is that more and more companies that are now going digital are also you know uh, they are becoming their compatibility with this SaaS market is being extremely high, and uh, these companies that specializing in uh, you know these making automation programs are now popping up and helping you know everybody else who is now you know digitizing their data, and that has created the SaaS industry that I mentioned earlier, and uh, even the more direct job where you know uh, today if you were a person that is doing say uh, data scraping or data entries even uh, that job is now completely automated you you will likely not find data entry jobs anymore other than you know uh, at small companies that have not yet managed to automate this process and uh, further what is happening is that uh, more complex jobs of data scraping which is uh, something that we call uh, fetching data off the internet and also uh, parsing it so that your systems can, you know, read data directly from the internet without any human person uh, needing any intervention. So that is now creating, changing the job role where, you know, the person who was going to do data collection or, uh, you know, even entries. Now that job has, that job opening has now changed to somebody who will manage the software that does this work, you know, possibly if one person can do one person's day's worth of time, the software can do 10 persons, uh, you know, worth of manpower into it. And they will only need one person to manage that software now. So that's how, you know, efficiency and productivity is going up today. But, uh, and this is where, again, Python is uh, absolutely crucial, where it will help you gain a working understanding of, you know, all of these various softwares that are going to just flood into the market, you know, very soon. And uh, this is now even just visible over here through just the increasing job trends. Now I have just pulled out pulled out a few uh, you know recent job trends that we're seeing in the market. Especially this is slightly old, maybe just a year or two old, but we are seeing that in the last eight years there is an absolutely huge jump in you know the sort of requirements for data scientist, what we call business analyst, and even this data analyst. So anything. Uh, job roles that have the word data in it and analyst in it or business those have absolutely shot up because of you know companies realizing that you know today if I'm not using this uh, I am actually losing out so 10 years ago if this technology was something that you could not afford today it is a technology that you can't afford not doing and uh, that is why we are seeing you know uh, companies that are even putting out requirements for students that are freshers or even less than five years experience and for a f less than five up to less than five year experience uh, of candidate requirements this is up this is almost 80 percent of the total uh, you know job pool that is out there and this is unprecedented you will not see this for any other uh, you know job role out there in the market today uh, at least anything that pays at the scale that data analysts or scientists pay for so, and finally, what is the kind of language that you will be using in this kind of job if you want to even venture into this field? And that is exactly, you know, Python and R are absolutely dominating these fields. 
and uh, the old languages of C, C++ or Java that you know we had heard, they are not even featuring on this table because so many libraries and paradigms have been built using Python and R uh, is that they are exclusively the only requirements that companies are looking for. Uh, to, tomorrow or today, if you are, you know, a commerce graduate that can understand Python programming, that can do scripting in Python, you will suddenly be preferred, you know, any day over a candidate who might have done better than you in college, but does not know programming at all. Because tomorrow at the job, you won't be working alone. You will be working with programmers or you'll be working with management. And if there is ever a part that you need to interface with them, you need to talk to both sides of the company, uh, being having that pro that programming skill and that communication skill is what will let you uh, actually stay ahead of the curve tomorrow when you're looking, you know, for a job or even in the career market. Now, the main thing that over here that I want to bring up is that these data driven jobs, uh, they all sound very different they look very different. But there is one common thread over here, which is the fact that uh, they only require, they mostly look for, uh, you know, these four main skills that I have written down here, which is an analytic skill set, uh, something that we call domain knowledge, which is basically specific knowledge of the sort of industry that you will be working in. Of course, communication skill, because if you have to talk to management or anybody, you should be able to present your ideas. And what is new is a programming skill, where if you're dealing with all of this data, if you yourself are able to parse it and work with it, that makes you more valuable than hiring a full-time programmer for anybody. And uh, let's just take a look at, you know, a few job descriptions. I think that would be one of the best ways to uh, see how this is possible. And that is the fact, uh, I've just picked out two uh, descriptions from some common, uh, some major companies over here. And uh, I won't read through the entire text of them, but uh, let me just show you how this text actually translates into this. this. This English is actually just asking for these four things when you actually look at them, which is the fact that uh, if you're say looking at uh, communication skills, that is, and let's just look at this one phrase over here, to learn and understand the broad range of Amazon's data resources. Now what that means is that you need to understand how Amazon does business. And when you understand that, you will be able to look at your data through that lens. And that is exactly what domain knowledge means. This typically comes from experience. But something that you can learn at college is an analytic skill and a programming skill. And that if you have both of them, that will put you, you know, 10 steps ahead of all of the competition who is looking for these jobs. Again, uh, not all of them will have, you know, these four requirements very cleanly put. Sometimes they will be mixed and matched uh, just to obfuscate but they're essentially asking for these four things. So, you know, when you think of the job role of say data analyst or say something that says business intelligence, uh, this is the intelligence that goes in it. It is basically your domain knowledge, that is your business knowledge combined with uh, programming and analytics skill and finally communicating that to executives and management so that the business, the person who is owning the business can take the right decision. Now, this is exactly basically what everybody does. Now, let's just take a, you know, slight look at exactly what is the sort of analytics that, you know, you do. And uh, that is where we kind of touch upon a little bit upon what data science is. And uh, that basically what it means is that you, when you are a data scientist or an analyst, you are not making complicated models or, you know, making these complex programs every day, day in and day out. You are basically sitting there and you are looking at the business and you're answering simple questions. It all boils down to the answering of questions. And the type of questions that are being asked, whether it is uh, what to do next, why something is happening or what is happening, the answer differs, of course. And uh, the sort of analysis that you do uh, to come to that answer, those analysis themselves are also, there are methods for them. So. And these are, this is a broad way to describe, you know, all the sort of analysis that you, a data analyst works on. And uh, what I've written down here are some popular methods to do these things. But uh, let's not worry too much about this. It's safe to say that basically it's an entire game of question and answers. 
and when you're effectively able to give answers to questions asked to you, that's when you've succeeded at your job. And uh, this is where now we finally start moving a little bit into how you will start doing these things. If you are to, you know, implement a CS statistical model, how would you be doing it? That's when your programming language comes and uh, that's where it's important to see why Python uh, actually helps not just the scientists or the researchers or the, you know, the hardcore programmer, the product developer, but also the accountant, the network engineer, the analyst. And uh, let's see, are there any major questions so far? Uh, Patan sir, have you uh, encountered any questions on the chat? Not yet. All right. No worries. So let me finish this talk and uh, maybe we can see any questions, field any questions towards the end. Finally, um, yeah, so let's actually dive into Python and why it is important that you should attend this course uh, and how it's going to help you. So uh, the one takeaway that you should take from this talk, if you can, is that today as any person, regardless of your field or whatever you're learning in school, college or anywhere, if you can learn just one programming language today, it should be Python because it's not just, you know, like I said, not just software engineers or mathematicians or, you know, uh, your scientists or product developers, but also accountants who are doing this. And the biggest testament of the ease of learning Python comes from the fact that today even kids are learning it. So if a child today is at this eighth standard of school, uh, there are places that are contemplating adding it to school curriculums because uh, it helps you create so many complex applications with very little amount of effort. And uh, and why you would say that why so many different kinds of uh, job, you know, roles are utilizing Python is that uh, it has an absolutely high level syntax. And by that, what I mean is uh, it is extremely easy to code in, which is another, you know, way of saying that uh, typing in Python, you don't have to worry about all of that uh, coding language and jargon. You only have to, you know, think about what it is you want to do. And it is very similar to coding in English. And that's what makes it very attractive to non-engineering students because you don't have to worry about uh, computer architecture or even the fact that, uh, you know, like what happens to when I have to handle memory or addresses or pointers. Uh, if you remember these concepts from school and they are something that frankly haunt even engineers today because uh, with Python, everything is, you know, uh, just wrapped up so neatly in a nice box is that, uh, and it handles everything internally. So that completely, you know, leaves the person free to think about uh, innovating and creating the product that they want. So let's uh, just take a look at what is the popularity. And, you know, I am just, I just said that everybody's using it, but uh, frankly, like, to what extent and if you look at uh, you know just some statistics that we are seeing on stack overflow we are seeing that python has now jumped from uh, at one of the lowest in 2012 just in these last eight years it has now exceeded java even when on the active questions asked and the number of people who are asking questions about python online so you know frankly to me as somebody who does programming uh, i do not remember a lot of syntax all the time uh, what i do is that Say, you know, even if I'm making a very simple application, uh, you know, say it's opening a file, parsing some data from say an XML, uh, I have done it before, but when I sit down to do it, I don't exactly remember what exactly was, you know, that little syntax that I used. So I go online and you check and uh, Stack Overflow is that, you know, haven for developers that helps them constantly uh, quickly check up small syntax and not worry about, you know, small, small things when it comes to coding. And uh, the success of a language is determined by how many people are using it today. So as goes with any language, you know, whether it's English or, you know, Hindi or anything else. So, and again, we are seeing usage is that Python has just grown so much is that it has now overshadowed everything. So that makes it important that today you understand Python, at least to the extent of knowing what is going on. So that when you are speaking to engineers, you know what you're talking about. And that will give you that edge that you need, you know, to uh, keep up with uh, all the changes that are happening. So uh, let's take a actual a more concrete example and as to how these things will actually impact you tomorrow. 
So before, you know, if you would have looked at uh, Microsoft Excel, you know, something that uh, is just staple, it's bread and butter for anybody, for any accountant or anybody who deals with data. And uh, earlier, you know, the what you could call the pinnacle of say Excel processing was uh, what you would call macros using Visual Basic, which is VBA. And uh, using some level of programming, you could automate a lot of processes in Excel. But again, you were there was a limit to what you could do. And of course, the data was, it was all supposed to be on the sheet itself. So uh, what you're seeing over here is just a very small example of uh, how you can, you know, try to create a nice visualization application for, uh, you know, somebody who wants to segregate data based on dates. But now this with Python, you could possibly take it to the next level. Uh, this is just one example that you can do is that uh, you can connect your script to the internet and update it online on the go. So here what you're saying is that uh, this one person has, you know, connected that Twitter account to this, uh, this Excel sheet and all the tweets that are refreshing on their newsfeed that is being, uh, you know, updated into this Excel sheet live. So this is just one of the many things that is possible. You can automate so many processes if there is any part of your job that needs you to go on the internet today that you can without doing all of the grunt work you can automate that using python and that scripting capacity is going to uh, just save you so much of time and energy that uh, it will actually save a big fraction of your work hours yearly and that's what people are seeing and that's why companies are constantly pushing that okay uh, we want somebody who can, we want Python programmers and we want accountants, but an accountant who can do Python programming uh, is going to be just, you know, an easy choice for anybody. So let's just take uh, a look at what are some of the best, the biggest use cases, what are companies actually using Python for? So this is a recent survey about a year or two uh, years ago taken. And uh, again, the biggest, the most widely used application is simply for data analysis which is the bulk of data that any company generates be it you know a small company uh, who just has a website and who wants to log the users that are coming on the website or those that are calling to a company that has a product and they are constantly getting feedback from the app store from people and they are collecting data from people using the product so this sort of data analysis is uh, again like data you know, justifies the, you know, the complete uh, overshadowing over all other forms of, you know, you, uh, application. And uh, again, the next being web development. And again, this is again, data automation. So this is, uh, this just uh, only proves the fact that I was saying where, you know, uh, simple tasks that can be repetitively done they can now be completely automated again using Python. And that is some of the things that we are trying to teach you, you know, through the course that we are offering here today. And this trend has now already set in, big companies are already doing it. So if you, you know, today you find yourself as a fresher in a big firm, you will already see that there is a team who is making scripts and who is making, you know, uh, completely creating programs that will replace other people's jobs. So this is something that you need to be more aware of cognizant of and possibly awareness of this will help you uh, you know like keep yourself relevant tomorrow in the job market and again so what makes python great is just the fact that not only is it a simple language to write in but it has such a massive community that today tomorrow it will be extremely easy for you to find answers to any question that you have whether you have the support of a teacher or not years later and of course the fact that there are so many people actively using Python is that it's open source community has created a large number of libraries. And that just means that tomorrow, if you want to do anything very specific, if you know C or C++ or Java, uh, nobody might have done that. But in Python, it's very likely that somebody has already done, faced the same problem that you have created a tool for it and just posted it for, you know, everybody else to use. And that's, you know, you can take advantage of that. And again, just finally, the fact that it being cross-platform is that you can work not just on Windows, but also on other operating systems and work with people from various domains together. So it just helps you being able to uh, talk at a technical level. 
and that's going to you know uh, just be a big you know a skill that you should you would like to have for the rest of your life and um, yeah finally we are uh, coming to the end of uh, my little talk over here and uh, so what we are doing is that uh, we at devlearn are bringing this python course to you know all students of podar college and i would strongly recommend that everybody watching this should sign up for this course uh, because it is a complete foundational course we are going to teach you from the ground up you know uh, even if you have absolutely no background in programming and uh, you will be able to you know from the first lecture where you will probably even learn what a data type is uh, towards the end we will bring you up to a level where you will be able to actually code a small application on something or you know with a piece of data on excel you will be able to perform a piece of analysis uh, do certain visualization and uh, there will be a real sense of achievement with that and of course not to mention uh, this is different from you know the sort of online lectures that you will see if you know if you go to udemy or any other you know online learning platform uh, they will not only charge you fees but they will also you will only find that there are uh, a bunch of video lectures that are put online and you have to uh, view them and you know rack your own brain to learn the same concepts uh, nobody is going to you know solve your doubts out there maybe they might at a have a few sessions you know depending on the platform but uh, what we are doing is we are giving you a live one on one kind uh, a level of detail attention and uh, every lecture you will be setting hands on whatever the teacher is teaching you at the first half of the lecture the second half you will be trying to practice that so day in and day out you will have that feeling ki yes today i tried something new tomorrow i tried something i'm going to learn that and uh, we're going to have small assignments they're going to be very easy to do and uh, you know it's again self paced but with the advantage of having a person actually understand where it is that what aspect you're not getting and to tell you you know how to think through it and again like this should just make choosing this course a no brainer which is the fact that we at devlearn have uh, collaborated with podar college and rusa to make this course completely sponsored so if you are a student of khalsa college uh, this course is completely free for you like you only have to sign up and attend uh, diligently and the end uh, given that you complete all the assignments uh, you will be eligible for uh, you know a certificate and uh, that will actually have standing uh, tomorrow when you want to show your credentials to people yeah so uh, this is just a small look at you know what the course is going to actually talk about where uh, i understanding that you know all those students here do not come from a science background and uh, you know probably there is also a lot of fear that you know uh, how will i even start programming i've never i've never even opened you know i've never written any piece of code before is it can i still do this course and the answer to that is yes because we will start from the absolute basics and you know from the first two or three lectures where you will learn to you know write that first piece of code and you know the, the just the simple fact that your first uh, piece of code that you will write in python will just be one line and you can print something which is just hello world and uh, the same thing if you were doing in c or c++ possibly that reaching that hello world would take at least three lectures because uh you would have to be taught how to import libraries how to set up your environment and uh, how how to you know understand all the you know the the jargon that goes beyond just printing one piece of code one line so again it's going to be fun because you're going to be able to do it very easily uh day in and day out like with just a few lines you will realize that you're able to uh, execute things and you're able to solve uh, you know simple problems and that's how we will slowly ramp up take it up to you know a little bit of complexity where you will understand that tomorrow if you're looking at a complex bit of code what is the structure uh, the entire paradigm of object oriented programming which uh, is how everybody makes products today is uh, we will not we will help you understand that paradigm and you will also uh, you know create a few uh, examples assignments in it and what will happen is with that exposure tomorrow if you are looking at some automation script that is using this you know at least you will be able to talk to the engineer you will be able to see if you know somebody messed around with that code maybe you can also probably fix it and 
that is going to help you so much uh, uh, after that so and the final uh, thing that will help you as a budding data analyst or you know even somebody who wants to go into business intelligence is going to be the libraries that you use in python which is the strength of the entire language which is uh, all of the complicated things that are being able to done with one piece of function that is that you can call by using a library so we are going to show you how to do that how to visualize all sorts of data you know through python and uh, it will ramp up from an absolute you know abc level to uh, doing real data analysis on you know some piece of data so uh, i strongly recommend that you should take this course as you know a foundation and it will only open up avenues for you tomorrow for anything else that you might want to do in your career so strongly recommend this and that brings us to the end of the talk so thank you very much for listening in and uh, joining in the chat so patan sir shall we uh, yes. field a few questions if there are any... yes sir there are there are few questions sir so yeah. one question is from g uh, vinagrish she is asking yes. is python similar to java okay sir your voice is not very audible patil sir my voice ma'am yeah now it is, is it clear now yeah yeah okay. okay one question is there that uh, mm-hmm. uh, from vina girish she is asking about uh, is python similar to java right okay so vina thanks for the question and uh, the short answer to that is no <laughs> because uh, java is a language that i will let me just show you uh, through this uh, you know chart is that uh, java is a language that almost exclusively functions on object oriented programming and you know writing simple code in java is not simple in fact so uh, i would say that you know if you already have a background in java you will find learning python extremely easy and uh, if you don't have a background in java then i would recommend that before learning any language first learn python because uh, the barrier to entry the ease of learning is so less uh, is so good that uh, you know you won't be worried about Uh, understanding all the internals that are happening inside the code and only worry about uh, what it is that you have to do and the logic of your code that's it so uh, like maybe i can show some examples uh, later on but yeah the short answer is that no python is a uh, slightly different framework than java yeah yeah uh, there is one more question uh, from uh, suresh hiremat right uh, he asked what is the scope of my sql and visual basics in data analysis absolutely this is a fantastic question in fact uh, i would have loved to touch a bit upon it but uh, the fact that uh, we wanted to keep the talk short and crisp is that i did not speak about it but if tomorrow you are going to be a data analyst and you are going to deal with the large amounts of data that you know are being generated in your company uh, what will happen is that it's not just python that you need to be get, uh, you know you need to understand but also you would should probably be able to understand how data is being pipelined and warehoused in your system let me uh, just show uh, one interesting chart that you know possibly i like to bring up and uh, that is this the fact that uh, so this is uh, you know a sort of bible chart for almost anybody any company or you know any data scientist to understand you know what are the needs of a company when you want to use these advanced technologies and the fact is that most companies are not going to need this tip of uh, this extreme pinnacle which is you know constantly using ai or deep learning because as a company either ai is your product that is you are a startup and you are building something that's powered by ai or uh, your product is powered by ai so you are your product is something else that your company has been doing for years and years and uh, you are only improving it with ai or uh, you know data analysis so here this is where uh, the role of mysql comes in is that uh, as a data analyst or even as a potential data engineer what you would do is that uh, you need to understand how the large amounts of data that come in are going to be manageable they can be accessed and they can be passed you know in your data analysis work so if you are part of a big company you will likely be speaking to a data engineer you know who will be dealing with this stuff so understanding of mysql 
uh, is extremely important as you know the next step of after post learning python if you want to be uh, if you want to build your career in these technologies yeah so coming to visual basic in data analysis visual basic is absolutely uh fundamental in excel uh because you know you won't be doing these fancy things every day at your job but you will be working with excel and if you can write macros using excel vbas that is again uh yeah going to be extremely helpful for you so i would recommend python learning next is maybe excel vbas and uh, post that if you're even further interested is trying to learn my sql uh you know a uh, little, little bit of say MySQL database uh, reading. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, there are few questions. That regarding... was a very good answer, actually. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, madam. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, there are few questions about uh, the course content and uh, how to apply for the course. You can you please apply? Right. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Yes. yes. So uh, that's, that's actually, actually I was going to mention that at the end. end. But, but uh, what we will be doing is we'll be floating a registration form. form. Uh, I, I hope, hope that Patil sir can forward the form on behalf of us at Develop, yeah. and uh, please fill in the form. We will be waiting a few. Uh, we will be soon starting the new batch. I think we are expected to start at the end of this week or early next week, uh, assuming that everything the preparations fall in place, and uh, uh, we will be giving you a deadline. So please fill in the Google registration form, and uh, we will take in your, uh, and you will be registered for the course automatically. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that we can inform the students? Uh, Akshat, can I ask one question? Yes, please, ma'am. Uh, what, what will be the uh, nature of the conduct of the course? Are you going to have every day or any timetable or schedule? Yes, yes. yes. So, so uh, can, can I just ask Dr. Dr. Kalam uh, to chime, chime in over here uh, to see if we can... can... Now, is it continuous? That's what... I yes, wanted yes, to. Yes, it's a. It will be a continuous conduction, and uh, what we will be doing is. Uh, you will begin, and how long it takes? So this is about approximately a forty-five hour course. So we'll be doing it in small chunks of you know two two hours uh, every okay. session, and hopefully in twenty-one to twenty-two sessions we will be finishing, and finally we'll do you know a quick revision of everything, and uh, like after a few days we'll hold a small test, and uh, it will all be. Very, very sequential, and at the end of it, you know, once all uh, all the students go through it, we can assign issue their certificates. Akshat, may I come in here? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, see, our college timings are mornings. So when you're scheduling the timing, uh, do ask them about their lecture timings, Absolutely. so it won't clash with their lecture yes, timings. Yes. So what Thank we will you. do is with the registration forms that we are floating, uh, the students will be given choices for. Uh, prospective time slots uh, that we will be fixing with the college administration and uh, based on the response of the majority response of the preferred time slots uh, we will be fixing the batch timings okay oh, thank you Akshay. yeah sir so, there is one question from uh, vedant shirke sure he is asking what is the difference between ai and ui okay <laughs> right Okay, so uh, Vedant here. That's AI, a very good question. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, this never, you know, uh, going too far from you know a particular topic. But uh, AI is just just to give you short form, long forms of each of them. Artificial intelligence and UI uh, just is short for user interface. So as you know, uh, a concept itself they're quite different. Where a if AI is a technology that you're using to improve your product. Uh, UI is in general a a tool for you know uh, people so that they can interact with these products and this technology. So you know tomorrow if I am somebody who is designing an app or you know some product that somebody will use in the future, if I, I say uh, create an app for that you are downloading from the app store and using the screens that you will see, the buttons, the design, the layout, that is your user interface that is how you interact with the technology so again that's how the word the term user interface comes in and what is happening at the back side you know at the back after you press the button when the analysis happens that is say powered by ai uh, as an instance if not by you know anything uh, say less complicated akshat can i say yeah. for me uh, muting and muting touching the button Right. is user interface and what happens 
when that mute button is uh, pressed and unmute is it's ai am i right <laughs> yeah so the very fact that you know uh, when pe- when you know last year when people were constantly facing this issue that you know uh, you are trying to talk to somebody you are e- expecting a response and the other person is saying he's trying to say something but they are on mute and you have to tell them you are on mute then it's a 2 to 5 minute process that you know that person will find his mouse look for the button and then click on unmute and then they will start speaking again today those companies they realize that you know because they keep seeing that people are facing this issue every day they wanted to shorten the response time for people so that they can unmute themselves quickly so that's how the feature of being able to unmute using space bar came a few months after you know everybody started using zoom so that is again a sort of feedback process that you know data analysts could uh, tell their companies say a data analyst at zoom is saying that uh, you know people constantly pressing the space bar that people are muting themselves and it takes time to unmute so let's figure out a re- solution for it so again you could use ai to power that space bar to mute and unmute yourself and uh, the very fact that people chose something very intuitive you are pressing the space bar and not say any uh, character key like a or z or q but uh, something very intuitive that is an example of good design yeah so that was just uh, yeah my two cents on just to add on what you had to say madam yeah uh, there is one question from uh, shruti shah she yes. is a student and she says that the uh, ca students have exams from 6 july till 20th july so she is asking whether they have any you know a uh, chance to have a second batch for them absolutely so this is not a one time thing that we will do uh we will check the response of the students now uh we have many interested students but uh, if there are a lot of students who want to attend after their exams we can schedule another batch as well so when we float the registration form to you please uh, write down all of your uh, preferences write down the timings that you prefer if you have a date after which uh, that you are busy then specify the reasons the questions will all be there so just fill in the form and we will consider your application uh, in any batch that happens now or later okay sir you have answered all the questions yeah thank you i think we're a little over time as well so yeah. i won't uh, keep you so even the students might have other lectures to attend okay yeah so i'll i'll propose vote of thanks uh, at the end of this uh, wonderful session uh, thank you akshit sir for uh, your wonderful presentation it was really very informative and useful for all of us you have touched mm-hmm. upon so many you know uh, a components of the technology which is going to be very useful for the students for job opportunities in python and skill required for it you have also touched upon ai technology its impact on retail chatbox technology digitization and how it is you know accelerating the automation process and all so uh, thank you for uh, giving us the wonderful you know uh, this presentation <coughs> i think uh, our students will definitely benefit uh, uh, from it uh, thank you uh, for your this i also would like to thank you akshar i have learned many things today and how uh, i wish i can suggest to you across the students and other community members can you make a, a course for retail and uh, uh, ai because we have got marketing management students who may would like to specialize in it python yes it is but if you can make ai and retailing and we can make a course content for it Uh, most of my students will be more benefiting i think that's a fantastic opportunity madam uh we yeah. at devlearn what we do is in house uh students who approach us directly we have a yeah. course that we called as uh, a business intelligence course wherein yeah. we teach you right from the basics say right from excel to advanced excel concepts where uh, you know all of the topics that i touched on today we will be teaching you them from the ground up also yeah, yeah. we will take it up to you know data analysis so what we can do mm-hmm. if at all at your leisure time we'll discuss and see one uh, some kind of a hybrid course we will uh, try to bring in retail component because our students are little bit oriented towards marketing so to capture the opportunity in the field of marketing retailing specially which is blooming like anything to a pandemic 
you need to have certain rfid viral sting storing will bring all those components if at all you can develop with the ai background i think that will make wonderful uh, opportunity for our children definitely yes so we'll be sure to you know design a custom course you can develop a course that's what i am trying to say. yeah yes, yes. yeah thank you very much akshat for be uh, open minded to accept my idea thank you Absolutely. thank you thank you very much akshat yeah. i think it was indeed a very good sure. very good uh, talk thank you thank you before uh, we close yeah. uh, can i just request uh, a few words from uh, say our director dr sanjay kadam also if he can just chime in uh, before we close for the day uh yeah good morning everybody thank you principal ma'am honorable uh, vice principal ma'am uh, dr patil for arranging this uh, wonderful opportunity for us for akshat to present himself uh, akshat looks after the technological aspects in uh, deblan while i look into the business aspects of uh, deblan so you know i would just like to just just two examples i'd like to give to commerce students like uh, you know pudar college has always been known for churning out uh, chartered accountants you know since i am born and brought up in matunga and uh, i have for me like pudar was a temple like you know for chartered accountants actually so uh, of late you know i've been really seeing that uh, uh, from my desk uh, i've been meeting interacting with chartered accountants parents who are chartered accountants who are coming to me for admissions and uh, by speaking to them i am seeing that they they themselves are more interested in getting into ai now because of their processes being so widespread maybe a big big chartered accountant has got offices all across uh, india and he wants to automate his processes and he wants to do a lot of things you know where uh, he doesn't need to see, send his auditors continuously to a to a company so i am seeing that uh, there is a big big chunk of uh, chartered accountants who are getting interested in this yes and of course i'd like to close all these discussions with a little small point in economics wherein uh, our finance minister nirmala sitaraman during her budget uh, 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 budget speeches she always keeps speaking about you know uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and these things so you know uh, moving ahead i am pretty sure that uh, these are going to be the domains where uh, each industry rather whether it's commerce or whether it is medicine or whether it is uh, xyz everybody is going to be dependent on these technologies so earlier the better that you you students get groomed to this and uh, yeah i'd like to conclude my talk talk at this thanks a lot um, dr sanjay with the uh, yes, support given to msme that is micro and small scale and medium enterprises and the yes, opportunity for them to use ai see they may yes. not be able to engage or uh, kind of uh, employ a full fledged ai specialist but mm. if at all we can uh, groom these young minds who can become yes. an consultant or a kind of the vocation they can definitely pitch in the requirement uh, by msmes which is uh, given a lot of uh, uh, what to say uh, uh, shoulder up by our uh, new budget and our economic policies correct ma'am correct ma'am i do understand we can always do that rather we would also look at you know once uh, uh, as a part of uh, as a continuing process you know when the students they uh, first they learn python then they learn yeah. to other technologies May maybe they can turn out to be entrepreneurs and there yeah. are the, there is a lot of philip going on for uh, for such avenues you know where uh, where you should be job uh, creators and not yeah. job seekers actually yes sir thank you very much for your words of wisdom thank you uh, thank you sir uh, thank i would also like to uh, you know uh, admit my, my sincere thanks to our principal dr shobhana vasudevan ma'am for her support as usual also uh, i am thankful to our uh, vice principal kavita jaju ma'am uh, last but not the least a big thanks to all our teachers and students who have participated in the program and made it very successful thank you once again thanks thank you thank you patil sir congratulations and let's thank work you. ahead and go forward and become real intelligent and artificially intelligent thank you very much <laughs> thank you yes thank you yeah bye bye have a nice day we may leave the program